Magic, magic is a funny one. Um, I went a little bit ballistic with the magic systems, I've got to say, because there's quite a few. Um, I actually cut some in the first book, but there was, so you have this magic of fire, the idea that um, there, was, there were women called the Mothers of Flame, who during this time called the Age of Flowers, very fantasy names, um, sacrificed their lives and burned alive in order to create a magic that would destroy the Yuxo, these these enemy um, nature gods, essentially, mm -hmm. um, that were taking over the subcontinent. And so they were destroyed. Um, so you have this idea of magic as a purity, fire, and sacrifice. Then you also have um, the people of the nature gods, or the Ahriyanyi, um, who, believe, who have a different magic system, which is essentially not based on sacrifice, though all of the systems are actually based on sacrifice. Little, little bits of sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, um, which is based on the idea that uh, there are nature beings that they worship and that a small group of children um, can be reared to be temple elders or priests. They must travel through the deathless waters three times and the strongest of them will survive those journeys and gain magical abilities in the service of their gods. Um, and some of them will die. And so there is a there is a relationship there between the idea that there is natural, there is strength and there is weakness, and only the strong may survive. Um and, th and that's also related to waters and the idea of minglings of different waters and things like that. Um then you have the um the worshippers of the nameless god who believe that your name is a prophecy. So you keep your name secret until it is time for it to be spoken. So a lot of people have sort of monikers or pet names. Um, that are used as if they are their real names, but they have secret real names. Uh, and all of those things were drawn from things I had read or seen. So, for example, um, a lot of uh, people get their name from um, from the, the Sikh holy book, like a mm. certain letter or um, syllable is picked and that gives you your name, or your name is picked according to your stars. Um, so in Hinduism, broadly, at least in the part that I'm from, um, so I thought it would be quite interesting to say if your names are kind of fated for you to sort of say, oh, maybe your name's a secret. Maybe people can't know. Um, and that kind of influenced that. The fire was drawn from a lot of Hindu law and belief and uh, the waters as well. Um, but actually, I always say this, um, the Yaksha the, or Yaksha are real nature spirits in Hinduism. Really? Um, oh, very cool. But yeah, but the way I modeled them was actually based just on Fae. So <laughs> that, was, that wasn't really, yeah, that kind of drew from a different source because the whole idea of like these powerful nature spirits was, was a totally different thing. And there's mm -hmm. also this whole thing of the rot or like plants turning into flesh and flesh turning into plants. And that was influenced by the fact that I used to be a medical librarian and I would look at a bunch of medical historical textbooks like um, The Sick Rose, which has a compendium of medical illustrations, bear with me, that look, like, um, that look a lot like botanical art illustrations. Mm -hmm. There's not much of a difference. And they're really, really uncomfortable to look at because you're looking at essentially horrible, disfiguring diseases drawn in this really beautiful way. And it and I kind of wanted to play with that, the idea of something beautiful but rotten um a little bit. And so I brought that in as well. 